Hi, Noka Tula. Tula, as you've been known to me for a long time since we were kids, basically. Um, it's going to be so great to have you in Portland next week. Hi, Suvin. It's great to see you here. And I'm really looking forward to coming up to Portland soon, very soon. And where are you right now? I am at home in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm asking because every time I talk to you, you're somewhere different. Seemingly, <laughs> I don't know how you, so I'm going to run down the things that I know you do. I know you play the viola. I know you compose. I know you are mom to two beautiful teenagers. And <laughs> do you still occasionally play violin too? I do. I do. I record stuff and play and and enjoy it and perform. Yeah, that's an, I do. That's, a, that's amazing. <laughs> And then you're just a general inspiration to so many, so many performers and young performers and young composers. And so what else am I missing? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, I have been assistant to assistant coach of my kids' school's cross-country team. So that's been early morning runs with, a bunch of kids so that's fun <laughs> wow so you have to run with them you can't just tell them to run i could tell them to run to run but i like to run with them that's amazing how long are the runs in the morning generally not too long under three miles sometimes we'll do three and a half miles if we're going for distance and i just go with kind of the middle pace to the slower pace and um just encourage them and talk and visit and enjoy Phoenix sunrises. That's amazing. Is running something <laughs> that, I mean, is it something that you did since you were a, a kid or is it something that's come on uh, more recently? Um, I've done it since I was a kid. And in fact, I ran track in high school. Subin. Wow. I think I knew. For one year and then for half a season, the following season. And then it was too much to balance music and track um, training and you, meets and stuff. Were you a distance runner then? Sprinter, 200 meters, 400 meters and long jump. So kind of middle distance sprinter, not a short distance, but I, I, I mean, I'd never run an 800 competitively, but the 400 meter was my race. It's a wow. brutal one. Oh, I know. I hear. So this is amazing because I have uh, one of my violin students at New England Conservatory um, was a high school track star. And oh, wow. Yeah, he's uh, very, very athletic. And um, we just had uh, somebody perform three Paganini Caprices earlier this morning in studio class. And we got into this whole conversation about the mentality of performing a Paganini Caprice and how it's analogous to various lengths, various um, sprint lengths. Like this one, mm -hmm. the first Caprice is like running the 100 and playing number 11 might be more like the 400 and like oh, how interesting. you yourself. It was, it was really, really great. And um, I don't know about you and your playing, but I'm always comparing performance mentality on, on you know, as, as a musician to um, sports performance mentality. I would agree with that. And I maybe even take it a step further. I believe that musicians are athletes completely and that we need to train our, our bodies and our minds in that kind of athletic way. Um, if we're not relaxed, if we have bad technique, it ends up hurting us in the long run. We, we, we can't play the way we want to play through injuries and things like that. So um, it's about training smart um, and not hurting ourselves and uh, doing stretches and staying limber and doing those kinds of exercises to do that too. I I agree with you a hundred percent plus. 
<laughs> it's amazing, actually. The more things you, you think about. I think we talked about um, slowing down time, you know, being in the zone, um, managing adrenaline, all of these things. It's, it's really, it's, it's amazing. I've learned so much from athletes, my favorite being Michael Jordan. Um, yeah. growing up and both of my sons I don't know if you know but they're both named after baseball players yes yes I know that there's a lot of sports admiration in the family yeah so one of the pieces that is going to be done on your program next week um, and I should mention the other performers your colleagues are going to be pianist Anna Polonsky uh, violinist Jamie Laredo and cellist Sharon Robinson. And so together you are a piano quartet ensemble and you're playing yes. works by Mozart and Dvorak. Um, classic, yes. classic favorite piano quartets. Um, the Mozart G minor. Oh no, sorry. G minor. Yes. And mm -hmm. the Dvorak E flat um, quartet. I yeah. actually came to rehearsal um, and we <laughs> We were about to rehearse the Mozart and we started the first note and I just played this E flat, like, oh, I'm just like vibrating. Like, and it's like, whoops, wrong quartet. I'm like, no problem, no problem. I had it on my iPad. I just didn't realize that we were, we were switching the quartets for the program. So it was very funny. <laughs> oh, with their G, it still makes an E flat major chord, probably. Unless yes, I mean, but I was clearly in the wrong piece. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, you know, at it, it, that first moment, it was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> Sorry about that. Good thing that you were, um, good thing that you rehearsed, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But the, um, the third piece is maybe the most exciting um, of all in the program. It's your own composition called Elegy. And I had a chance to hear it in August. Um, very, very powerful, moving piece, um, reflective, kind of devastating in a way, but also so it, it had, it was uplifting as well. And, um, Thank uh, you. Chamber of Music Northwest, um, was a co-commissioner with many other organizations. Um, it's been amazing to see it being performed and received incredibly, um, around the country, really. So uh, I'm sure our audience is going to be bowled over by it. What um, I know from talking, I know from talking to you, you have been swamped with commissions in recent years. And what else is coming up for you? Are, are we allowed to ask you what, give us a sneak peek of what pieces are coming down, down the line? Well, it has been a pretty busy couple of years with commissions. And I actually premiered four pieces this year. So I've never had a year like that. Um, Elegy being one of them. And thank you, Chamber Music no Northwest for being an amazing and supportive co-commissioner. This is the second commission that we've gotten to work on together. And I really appreciate the support and the belief um, in the writing, and um, I can't wait to share it with you guys. Um, so there's Elegy that's going to be coming up, um, but I've also performed Cars Talk in February at the Colburn School. It was a commission from the Colburn School. Um, and then Down for Viola, Flute, and Harp, which Umama Womama Valerie Coleman and Han Lash and my trio, we will perform this coming summer, 2023. Um, but we did the premiere uh, with co-commissioner Phoenix Chamber Music Society at the festival in March of this year. So that's three. And then did I mention, so I did Elegy, didn't I? Or that was two. And then Elegy is three. And then Finding the Dream uh, commissioned by John Clements and the Phoenix Boys Choir was just premiered last weekend. So it's been really busy. Um, and then upcoming pieces, I have a quartet, finally a string quartet 
that I will be writing for the Takash Quartet uh, for next year, but that will premiere the following season. So it's for 24-25 when people can start to hear that. Um, so that's exciting and a little daunting. And then I'm writing an orchestral work, which is looking for a commissioner uh, called Pray for Peace, because I feel in this world right now, if we could all just take a moment to pray for peace, maybe we would intentionally together achieve peace. And I think that that is the biggest issue right now, especially in terms of uh, environmental stewardship. We definitely don't do the earth any favors by fighting with each other. So if we're environmentalists, we should really want to promote peace and working together and harmony so that we can start taking care of our planet. So I'm just trying to pray for it and uh, write about that because I really don't know what else to do. Oh, that's amazing. First of all, <laughs> it's like dizzying to think about all those pieces that you have to write. And, um, but second, I, I was just noticing your, the, the titles of your pieces are, um, they're so direct, um, sort of succinct, clear. Um, and I think they, they show everyone who doesn't even know you, doesn't even know your music. Um, but if they sort of see the, your body of work and your titles, um, they can get a glimpse into you, your personality. And, and that's so, it's so wonderful. You just, like I said, you've always been such an inspiration and, and so hopeful. So, so hopeful. And that's why I love being around you. Um, Aww, thanks. So one of your partners um, for next week's concert, pianist Anna Polanski, and um, we were all in school at the Curtis Institute of Music together, and Anna was one of my most frequent collaborators at the time, and um, still just such a beautiful pianist, and everybody, seemingly everybody, just loves playing with her. Um, you're also playing with Jamie Laredo and, and Sharon Robinson and um, really legends. I know it sounds cliche, but living legends, right? And, exactly. and Jamie was one of my teachers also at, at Curtis. And I was thinking about your background and my background, your teachers, um, I mean, including Karen Tuttle um, at, at Curtis and, and also someone who was there at, at the time, I don't know how much you studied with him, but you were certainly around him. Michael Tree, the violist of the Guarneri Quartet, who's very old, old, longtime friends with Jamie and Sharon as well. So what is it, what is it like to be playing? You've been playing quite a number of concerts with Jamie and Sharon in this quartet. I understand you even recorded sextets as well. And, yes. Um, yeah, what is it, what is it like? I mean, it's kind of, our heroes growing up? Well, it's a dream. It's amazing. Um, it's always a wonderful conversation and exchange and education to play with Jamie and with Sharon and with Anna. Um, all three of them are wonderful artists. And um, I started playing with Jamie and Sharon and the Calix Laredo Robinson trio um, over a decade ago. Uh, we actually, uh, I taught with Jamie and Sharon at Indiana University for a couple years. And so when we were there together, that was really a great opportunity to get to know each other in that more collegial way. Um, not in the way that's a like student to mentor completely, although that never fully goes away, I don't think. Um, but uh, we got to know each other more at, you know, there and make music together. And then from there, uh, when I moved back to Phoenix and I was uh, starting to do more work and I guess lay the groundwork for the composer in residence position here, um, 
they came out to Phoenix quite often and come out to Phoenix quite often to perform on the uh, Phoenix Chamber Music Society series. And so uh, they are the ones who invited me to start playing with them a little bit more and touring. Um, and so that was a special treat for me to be able to continue to grow and learn and and make music with them and look forward to those concerts. Uh, so what is it like now? It's just fabulous. Uh, we were playing at the Kennedy Center a few weeks ago and um, just the feelings of joy and sharing and amazement <laughs> on stage when I hear these fabulous musicians whom I'm proud to call my friends and colleagues um, just do a spin of a phrase or just to get into the flow of the music that we're doing together is, it's hard to put into words just how wonderful and yet, and how engaging and dynamic that sharing and that conversation is when we get to do it in person. Let's get a little bit, um, a little string dorky just for a second. Um, because we had an amazing conversation in public a couple of months ago um, about about string mm -hmm. playing. And, and we're, I was asking Jamie what his secret is. How does he sound? He still just has the same unbelievable sound that he's always had. Silkiness. It's just, I mean, yeah, silky, radiant. And um, and uh, his wife Sharon immediately volunteered. She said, "I'll tell you how how he plays, like that scales, practices scales all the time." And we got into this amazing discussion about scales. And but there is something. I mean, Jamie definitely kind of is a descendant of the tradition of what we call the golden age of violin playing, and. Um, that included some pretty hot violists too, like William Primrose, for example. Um, but um, there is something different, isn't it? Like we, you and I, we younger ones, will we just admire that generation for some kind of really amazing seductive quality. Do you, can you put it into words? Oh. <laughs> um, well... I think you did a great job putting it into words. I, but I also think that practicing scales and just keeping the equipment going and limber uh, is what we all need to do as players to have longevity. So um, Jamie continues to be a mentor as does Sharon. It's amazing. They come out and they approach every single concert with, the utmost integrity and they leave it all out there on the stage. So they're my heroes, they are. And, um, but doing scales and exercises, like I like to do Shrotic and Sevchik and my kids know that more than I guess other pieces that I play because that's what I have to play to, to be able to play. And the four octave scales that you suggested I start working on, which I do. <laughs> so thank you, Susan. <laughs> um, I'll tell you something that I really got from Jamie as a teacher. And uh, I mean, one of the things he drilled into us, uh, all of his students, um, would play some play one piece, and he'd say, "That was so beautiful. You just need to articulate more." And then we'd play another piece and then he'd say, wow, that was so great too, but you need to articulate more. And that word articulate just came out every lesson, year after year. And he said, Isaac Stern told him the same thing when he was younger. Um, Alexander Schneider uh, from the Budapest Quartet told him the same thing. And um, I think that's one thing that I still uh, marvel at when I hear Jamie and Sharon is the like the the specificity of their articulation how spoken it is and uh, and I know that I think that's one of the reasons that one of the qualities that makes their playing just go deep into me 
when, when I'm yeah. listening and one of the qualities that I try to emulate. Um, so your program is next week in Portland is sure to be a hit. And I hope that everybody is going to join you in the hall and uh, have a safe trip and see you soon. Thanks so much. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, Tula.